Hello, welcome to physics class once again. My name is Olojimi Kibre. Last time we looked at machine where we discussed about velocity ratio, mechanical advantage and efficiency and we established a relationship between efficiency, mechanical advantage and velocity ratio where we discussed about mechanical advantage as ratio of force of load to effort and velocity ratio as the distance moved by effort all over distance moved by load and we gave some assignments which we'll be looking at the correction now a machine has a velocity ratio of 6 and is 80 percent efficient what effort will be needed to lift the load of a load of 300 newton with the aid of this machine this was the relationship we established between mechanical advantage velocity ratio and efficiency but before we can calculate for effort we also established that mechanical advantage equals to load all over effort that means we can calculate for load or effort without having to calculate our mechanical advantage first. Now, this is efficiency, while this is mechan um, velocity ratio. Now, our mechanical advantage equals to 80 times 6 divided by 100 equals to 4.8. Now, we know that m equals to ma equals to l over e which is 300 our load is 300 all over effort equals to 4.8 which is our mechanical advantage now e equals to 300 divided by 4.8 the f fish the effort required to lift a load of 300 is just 62.5 newton Another one, a machine with a velocity ratio of 30 moves a load of 300 newton when an effort of 200 newton. What is the efficiency of the machine? Now, point of correction, this was to be 3000. But because I omitted, I had to use the 300 for this correction. Now, our efficiency equals to mechanical advantage of a velocity ratio times 300, well, 100 percent. Now, we first of all find our mechanical advantage, which is 300 divided by 200 equals to 1.5. Now, 1.5 divided by 30 all over 100 equals to five percent that means this machine is not efficient at all now we move to types of machine the first one we'll be looking at is the lever the lever is one of the simplest machines known large resistance can be overcome by the application of small force by the application of small Force. Now, this is a typical example of a lever. Now, this is where you have your load. This is where you apply your effort. And this is the fulcrum. Now, look at it here. When somebody is using it as a machine, this is the load that you want to carry. This is the fulcrum. And this is the where you where you apply your effort this is where the person is applying the effort to lift this stone up ordinarily the person might not be able to carry this stone but he had to divide a means of applying small effort to overcome this large load that is how to make use of a lever example of a lever is the scissor in your school compound we have types of lever we have first class, second class, and third class. Now, all these class are based on the arrangement of the load, fulcrum, and the effort. Now, when you have the fulcrum between the load 
and the effort we call it first class now when you have the load between the fulcrum and the effort we call it second class the third class is when you have this is where you hold it this is the fulcrum this is the load where you, this is where you used to pack sand this is where you apply your effort this is where you used to hold it other example of first class of different class of liver are your claw armor you can imagine where you add the fulcrum and the effort and the load your crow bar nut cracker plier and scissors now we move to system pulley system simple pulley pulley system is one of the most widely used type of machine it is often used in the construction site to raise or lower heavy load if you have gone to the construction site you see them with different kind of pulley all this every every machine every like caterpillar they make use of pulley now a simple pulley is a fixed wheel hung on a suitable support with a rope round it groove now look at a typical example of a pulley this is the load this is where it is being hung to this one is a wheel that can move this is where you apply your effort when you draw it down this load will move upward you can see when you move upward this wheel will roll in between it this is where you have the groove is where you have the rope now we have six step pulley when you have two or more pulley combined together we call it block and tackle system of pulley this is a more this is more practical system of pulley in which one or more pulley are mounted on the same axle with continuous row passing all around the pulley now look at this one this is where you have the rope pass this way up to this level when you move this rope like this this load will move up when this rope move this way this load will move up now the number of wheel you have there will determine the value of the velocity ratio look at this one has two wheel that means the velocity ratio is equal to two this one has four wheels that means the velocity ratio equals to four this one also has four wheels that means the velocity ratio equals to four now look at the movement of this diagram now look at this is we call it final effort because by the time you draw this rope this way this load will move up now you can see from the initial position to the final position is the load distance now this is the original position this is the final position that means this is the effort distance you can see when this rope move forward this move upward also these two they are fixed you can see only these two are movable you can see we have movable part and two fixed parts now you can see the movement that is how a system of pulley works we call it block and tackle we call it block and tackle system of pulley now example a block and tackle system of pulley consists of four pulleys consisting of four pulleys is used to raise a load of 500 newton through a height of 20 meter that is the load moves a height of 20 meter if the total work done against friction in the pulley is 800 joules calculate the total work done the efficiency three the effort applied now when you multiply this time this that is work done on this machine work done by the machine then you are also doing work against friction 
Now, the work done by the machine and the work done against friction will give us the total work done on the machine. Now, work done by the load, that is work done raising the load plus work done against friction. And work done raising the load is load force times distance, that is the load times the distance move plus the work against friction, which is equal to 10,800 joules. That is how to calculate the total work done in a machine. Now, the efficiency. Efficiency can also be calculated using work output over work input times 100%. The work output is the result the load shows. That is, you move a load to a distance with an input work. Which this is the input work, the work you input, then the work output is 10,000. That is, by the time you calculate efficiency equals to 92.6%. Now, we have to calculate the effort applied, but we can't get the effort unless we first calculate for our mechanical advantage. Now, using this formula, mechanical Efficiency equals to mechanical advantage all over velocity ratio times 100%. Like I told you, the number of pulley you have will determine the value of the velocity ratio. And in this case, we have 4. That means 92.6 equals to MA all over 4 times 100%. Now, divide both sides by 100. This is what you will have. Now, cross multiply MA equals to 92.6 times 4 divided by 100. Now, our answer equals to 3.7. But MA equals to L all over E. That will be 3.6 equals to 500 divided by E. Don't forget our load is 500 Newton. Now, E equals to 500 divided by 3.7 which is equals to 135 Newton. Now, we move to inclined plane. Now, look at this picture. This is a plane that is connecting the floor, the ground, and this height. This is the height. Ordinarily, this man cannot lift this way barrel vertically this way. He had to divide a means of doing such. Now, this is the ground. You can see the plank is forming a right angle triangle with the ground and the height where it's carrying, it's taking the load to. Now, what this plank is called inclined plane. Now, along this plane, you can see friction will always occur. This type of machine is used to raise heavy load, such as drum of oil, up a stopper plank to a high floor of a of lorries of lorries now assuming you want to roll a drum contain oil you know how heavy it could be you can always roll it up it is more easier to roll it up than to lift it up from here up this place you can see it is more easier to roll it like this, to roll it, roll it, than to lift it off vertically. The sloping plan is an example of an inclined play. Now, look at this picture. This is a block of max that being applied with an effort, and effort is applied to it. Now, when you apply the effort along, along the length of the plank, we call it effort distance. That means this is the distance the effort we cover. Now, this is the height the load has to cover. We call it BA. As the applied force or effort E moves along OB at an angle theta to the horizontal, the load L is lifted up through a vertical height AB. This is the vertical height AB. You know that from velocity ratio, equals to distance moved by effort this is distance moved by the effort 
all over distance moved by the load. This is distance moved by the load, AB. That is OB all over AB. Now, when we are using, let's say we want to use sine sin theta. This is OB. This is AB. Now, sine theta equals to opposite all over half descent. That is sine theta. Sine theta equals to AB all over OB. But what you have here is the reciprocal of sine theta. That means this value can be equals to 1 all over sine theta. You can see ordinarily sine theta equals to AB all over OB. But what you have here is the other way around, or the, or the inverse. That means inverse of this is equal to 1 all over sine theta. Now look, since there is friction along the plane between the load and the plane, affect the friction efficiency and the mechanical advantage will be less than the velocity ratio. Take note, all this one, there are multiple questions. They can just say, which of this is not correct? Mechanical advantage is more than velocity ratio. Velocity ratio is more than mechanical advantage or they are they equal. You should know which ones to pick from your multiple choice answer. Now, example. The floor of a lorry is 2 meter height. Look at. This is the height. It's 2 meter. A plank 5 meter long. 5 meter long. This is 5 meter. It's used to raise an to use is used as an inclined plane to raise some loads up the lorry. Now look at this is the ground. This is the height to the lorry. Let's say this is this is the inside of the lorry. This is the plank. Now, if the efficiency of this machine, you can see the inclined plane has been considered is considered as a machine. If the efficiency is 50%, what is the minimum effort required to raise a load of a load 200 newton up the plane? Now, this is the effort distance and this is the load distance to calculate your mechanical velocity ratio. That is 5 all over 2 equals to 2.5. Now, find the efficiency because we have been given efficiency. We have gotten our velocity ratio. We calculate MA so that we can calculate our effort. Now, this is the formula to calculate your MA. Cross multiply 50 times 2.5 divided by 100. That is 1.25. Now, you know MA equals to L over E. 1.25 equals to 200 over E. Now, your E equals to 200 divided by 1.25, which is 160 Newton. That is how to use an inclined plane as machine. Now, we can also use the inclined plane to find the coefficient of static friction using the, in using the inclined plane. Now, look at... You know, when we were dealing with friction on a horizontal table, you know, this is F and this is P. This is the force you want to use to move this load. This is the opposing force. That is P equals to F. Now, R is perpendicular to this plane. Before you can get this, you have to resolve the weight of this block vertically and horizontally this is the horizontal component and this is the vertical component now r is the normal reaction f is the limiting friction and w is the weight of the block now since we have resolved we've resolved forces along the plane then at equilibrium f is equals to w sine theta where w equals to mass times gravity now resolving perpendicular to the plane 
we have our r equals to w cos theta now when you divide this, this let's say this one is equation one this one is equation two when you divide one by two this is r we have this then w will cancel out when you have the ratio of sine theta to cos theta you have tan theta now by definition from our knowledge of friction coefficient of static friction equals to the limiting friction the limiting force all over normal reaction will give us this now that means our moon equals to tan theta that is whenever you are giving this angle to calculate coefficient of friction then just find the tan of that angle you have your answer example a mass of 2 kg is placed on an inclined plane if the angle of inclination is 60 degree calculate the force parallel to the plane which will move the block up now we have been given the angle that means friction is taking place and we know that u equals to tan theta that means our mu equals to than 60 degree now having resolved this one because we we need the that um, parallel force acting along the plane look at we have a force here this is the force mg sine theta then we also since you are going this way you are applying force this way there is also an opposing force which is friction that is how why you have this formula added to it now the force parallel since at equilibrium they are equal that means p equals to forward forces equal to the opposing forces that means p equals to mu r plus mg sin theta you can see r equals to mg cos theta as you have seen in the previous slide equals to mg sin theta now put everything back you have mu equals to mg cos theta plus mg sin theta and mu equals to tan theta that's why we have tan theta here mg cos 60 degree plus this by the time you put everything tan 60 is 1.7 mass is 2 g is 10 cos 60 is 0 0.5 plus 2 times 10 times 0 0.866 everything will give us 34.64 newton that is how to use inclined plane to calculate for coefficient of static friction now we move to the screw jack you can see here this is a typical screw now the distance between this is called pitch the distance between two successive screw thread is called pitch all this we call them thread you can see it's like this we call them thread the distance between two thread is called pitch p when you move anything like a knot around it when you move once like form a circle it will move this distance p now when the screw head is turned through one complete revolution just like circle the load moves through a distance equal to the pitch now look at the second one this is a screw jack this is a screw jack now this is what you will be turning when you turn it around this way the car will move up. We use this screw jack to lift up heavy loads like cars. When you turn it once, like one revolution, it will move distance p. When you move it twice, it will move 2p. When you move it, move it twice, it will move 3p. Now, this one, when you move it, we call it the tummy bar. But when you move it around, the length from here, we call it radial because you will use it to form a circle now as the tummy bar moves round once 
the effort act through a distance equals to the circumference of the circle of radius r. You can see my diagram, it will form a circle and the radius of that circle is the length of that tummy bar. Now, the effort will have moved a distance equal to the circumference of the circle. Now, this one is our effort distance, while the pitch is the load distance. And we know that velocity ratio equals to effort distance all over load distance. And the effort distance is the circumference of the circle formed by this tummy bar all over the pitch. At the same time, the load moves up through a distance equal to the pitch P of the thread. That is how we get, we got our velocity ratio. Now, look at this example. The pitch of a screw jack is 0.5 cm. The arm is 50 cm. That arm is what we call the tummy bar. And its mechanical advantage is 250. What is the efficiency? Efficiency. Now, the first thing to do, this is our formula. The first thing to do is calculate your velocity ratio, which is 2 pi r all over p. That r is the length of the tummy bar, which also equals to the radius of the tongue. That is 2 pi times 50 all over the, because this is the length of the tummy bar, r. This is p. Now, put the whole of this place under this, that is 250 divided by this. What you have under, when it comes up, it becomes something like this. You can decide to leave your answer in pi, or you divide further. This is the efficiency of the screw jack. Now, we move to wheel and axle. Wheel and axle. This is the wheel, this is the axle, just like having two circles of different radius. This is R and this is R. When this is where you apply your effort, this is where the load moves. The circumference of this large circle will give you the effort distance. While the circumference of this wheel will give you the axle, will give you the load distance now effort distance all over load distance that is 2 pi r all over 2 pi r this is the circumference circumference will give you the distance when you cut 2 pi away it will remain r all over r that means the velocity ratio of a wheel and axle is the radius of the wheel all over radius of the axle like you have here now example a wheel and axis of radii 32 cm and 4 cm respectively is used as a machine to raise a load of 400 newton by a force applied to the rim of the wheel. One calculate the mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, and the efficiency. This wheel and axis is something used to fetch water in a deep well, like the one you just wind by the side. Is an example of we are axis. Now, to calculate your velocity ratio, you can see it's not add your mechanical advantage force 40 all over 80. The load is 400 newton. Why your effort is 80 newton? The effort applied is missing in the question, but the effort is given to be 80 newton. Now, that is our mechanical advantage. E equals to 80 newton. Now, velocity is equal to radius of wave all over radius of axis. That is 32 all over 4 equals to 8 centimeter. Then you combine the two to get your efficiency. That is how to use wheel and axle as a machine. Now, the wedge is a combination of two inclined plane. Now, this is a wedge. It's like this. 
Example of a wedge is a is an axe cut last. You can see the way the amount is sharpened. So that when you apply a force here, it will divide anything into two. Just like your knife. A knife is also an example of wedge. Look at a wedge. The wedge is a combination of two inclined plane. It is used to separate body which are held together by large force, e.g. splitting timber. Example of which type of machine are axe, chisel, knife and other cutting tools. When you check the tip of a cutler of a knife is like this. That is why it's able to cut anything you want to cut. Now, assignment. A block and tackle system of pulley with velocity ratio 5 is used to raise a mass of 25 gram to a vertical distance at a steady rate. If the effort equals to 60 newton, determine the distance moved by the effort, the work done by the effort lifting the load. Example 2, example 2, a steel jack whose pitch is 2 mm is used to raise a motor car of mass 900 gram to a height, through a height of 30 cm. Take note, millimeter and centimeter, they must be of the same unit. The length of the tummy bar is 40 cm. If the jack is 60% efficient, calculate the velocity ratio mechanical advantage of the jack, effort required and the work done by the effort. Take G to be equals to 10 meter per second squared. And for further reading, get new school physics by Anyakowa. Till I come your way next time, have a great day.